When naming a video game, there are different elements that can help the final decision. Some developers decide to name their games after the protagonists, others decide to name it after some sort of MacGuffin related to the story, or you could also do like Square, and just add a bunch of numbers together and call it a day. Naturally, of course, GG Square, GG. And this is the part where it cuts to the intro. Intro! Intro! If you've been following my channel for a while, and you should, you probably already know that I love the Kingdom Hearts series more than any other weird crossover franchise that ever existed. This is pretty much a given at this point. So, it makes sense that many people always requested me to review at least one game of this weird yet beloved franchise. And today is the day, or the 358th day to be specific. <laughs> What's up with me and these awful jokes? Somebody's gonna fire me. Kingdom Hearts 358 over 2 days was released in 2009 for the Nintendo DS, right after the last game was released for PlayStation 2. Oh, Square Enix, you and your weird choice for consoles are never going to make any sense. The game itself was highly requested and needed by fans since it tells the story of Roxas back when he was part of the Organization 13, how he became friends with Axel and how he left it to finally merge with Sora again. Of course that this game made the plot of Kingdom Hearts more complicated and hard to follow, but boy did it make it more emotional and engaging as well. 358 over 2 days is an interesting title for the series. While it was received with mixed reviews from the critics, the fanbase loves it with passion. What's the real deal with this oddly named Kingdom Hearts game then? So, as both a professional reviewer and a big Kingdom Hearts fan, I am here to analyze the game and give you my final, unbiased verdict. Let's start with my thoughts on the plot, shall we? Wait, did I just say I am a professional? Yeah, yeah, L let's go for that, maybe somebody will believe it. The Kingdom Hearts franchise is infamous when it comes to its storytelling. On one side, it has one of the biggest, deepest and most enjoyable plots in gaming, and I really love it. But on the other hand, it can get pretty repetitive and just plain dumb at times, even with a few plot holes here and there. You see, back in Kingdom Hearts 2, Roxas's character arc was underdeveloped. We kept hearing about his friendship with Axel and how he betrayed the Organization 13, but aside from a few cutscenes, we never got to see how that actually happened. That's why 358 over 2 days was such a requested game by the fans. In this side game, you play as Roxas, Sora's famous nobody, and you get to see how he lived with the Organization 13 for 358 days, as he is sent to different missions in order to harvest hearts with his Keyblades in order to create Kingdom Hearts. This game also takes place between Chain of Memories and Kingdom Hearts 2, by the way, just felt like clarifying that just so you can keep up with the story. Not only Roxas' character is developed and his relationship with Axel, but we also get to experience how and why he decided to leave the organization, something I find very satisfying and interesting to watch. Now, you might be thinking that just because it shows stuff we already knew from Kingdom Hearts 2, the story of 358 over 2 days is not unique at all. But then you would be wrong, because this game actually introduces an entirely new character to the table, Shion, a mysterious new girl who is the number 14 member. Of course, a 14 member in the organization 13, very clever Semnas, that's why Aqua's armor won't talk back to you, you silly ghost! Now, I won't say much about Shion and where she came from, but I gotta say that she made the plot of this game even more engaging and more emotional. It really did make an impact on the entire franchise and in the hearts of many fans. Shion's backstory and character are truly very intense, tragic and sad. I am not even afraid to say that this game made me shed many tears on few occasions. Yeah, look, look, look at the tears. Fuck, I can't cry. There, there you have the tears. Are you happy now? Obviously, as much as I love this story, and I would even dare to say that it's the best thing in the game, it's not without its flaws. Like every other game in this series, it can get really hard to understand at times, especially if you haven't played other Kingdom Hearts games before, and it's not devoid of some really cheesy dialogue here and there. 
But once you can get over these solid flaws, you will find yourself with one of the most memorable and emotional stories ever put in a Kingdom Hearts game. And I personally think that 3 5 Day over 2 days is worth to be played mainly for the plot by itself. This part of the story is so good that it was actually featuring the 1.5 HD remix as a big movie, so you can check it out on that if you want. But that means you would miss the rest of the game. And how is the rest of the game? Well, let's right dive into the next segment in order to find out. The Kingdom Hearts franchise has some very obvious flaws, but if there's something every single title has absolutely nailed, it's the presentation. No matter the console it's in, every Kingdom Hearts game looks and sounds almost perfectly. Now, keep in mind that 358 over 2 days was made for the original Nintendo DS. Considering most of the titles for this handheld look like this, and not like this, the fact that a third-party company like Square Enix could make such a good-looking 3D game for the DS is actually very impressive. 358 over 2 days looks pretty good, the character models are perfect, it runs smoothly and it's overall a very colorful game, like every single Kingdom Hearts title released before or after. Ok, yeah, maybe some of the cutscenes make you realize how weird the models may look, but for a system with so many limits like the DS, these minor issues are easily forgiven. As for the sound, it's what you would expect from this franchise, the sound effects feel good and they are implemented when necessary, and the voice acting is top notch like always. Every single voice actor returns to voice all the characters, especially those at the organization 13, and they all give amazing performances, which is always really appreciated. Although Jesse McCartney as Roxa sounds a bit off from time to time, especially with some of those lines that are very cheesy. I mean, who else will I have ice cream with? But aside from him, most performances are very good, and hey, we even got some newcomers like Alison Stoner as Shion, you know that random girl who appeared in some random kids movies? Yes, she's older now, and she voices Shion. As for the music, all I can say is... Shoko Shimomura, the iconic video game composer who made the soundtracks for every single Kingdom Hearts entry, returns for this one and, like always, completely nailed it. For the limitations of this console, she managed to capture the essence of every situation and world, thus creating some chill-inducing atmospheres. New songs like Music por la Tristesse de Xion, At Dusk I Will Think of You and Vector to the Heavens sound beautiful and memorable. Even the returning tracks like Beam and Vigor or Tension Rising sound exactly like their counterparts on the home consoles, which is very impressive when you remember this was all made with the DS and its inferior sound capability. Granted, the soundtrack of this game borrows a bit too many songs from other ones, but aside from that, it's very good. Major kudos to Joko and her team of musicians. I hate you for making me tear up so much with your music. No, not really, I, I love you for that. <laughs> I could make an entire video discussing which genre the Kingdom Hearts franchise falls into, so let's just leave it at action RPG, and 3-5 day over 2 days is no exception. In this game, Roxas will have to use different keyblades, items and magic in order to defeat many enemies known as the Heartless and harvest the hearts inside them. The classic hack and slash approach is dynamic and very fun, but sadly I must admit that 358 over 2 days has the worst combat system in any game of this franchise, maybe with the exception of Chain of Memories. Yeah, I understand the limits of the DS, but they could have done something much better with it. This combat feels very clunky and very outdated, even more so than the original Kingdom Hearts, and that was 7 years before this game! I appreciate all the mechanics they added to try to keep it fresh, and trust me, I really enjoyed the combat of this game, but it doesn't change the fact that it's just not that fun, especially when you compare it to the fantastic combat system of Kingdom Hearts 2 just a few years before. But yeah, like I said, there are a few new mechanics implemented in 358 over 2 days that keep it different from other Kingdom Hearts titles. One such case is the use of a panel system. Before every mission, you can completely customize Roxas with this weird panel thing reminiscent of Tetris, 
Ki Kingdom Hearts Tetris. Now that would be an interesting spin-off. Now, while it may sound unorthodox, this system actually works wonders for the customization. You can choose a Keyblade, equip it with different accessories to raise its stats, add some armor, choose which magic spells you will use, and other stuff that can really help on your missions. It's actually pretty neat. Speaking of which, the magic works a bit different in this game. Instead of having a magic meter, you will have to choose a certain number of magic spells to use with the panel system. And the good thing is that every version of a spell works differently. So there is a reason for using both Thundara and Thundaga in the same mission, for example. Yeah, it's a weird implementation of the magic, and it may sound like a bad thing, but it doesn't really affect the gameplay that much. However, even if the combat of this game is clunky as heck, there is one big rhythm and quality to it. The limit breaks. Taking a page from Final Fantasy, 358 over 2 days includes this new mechanic. If your health is very low, you can activate a powerful attack that can destroy a lot of enemies with ease. Limit breaks are very useful and let's just face it, very badass. Every playable character has its own version and they are all really fun to use. And yes, I did just say playable characters. Why? I'll get to that very soon. There is one obvious flaw in Kingdom Hearts 358 over 2 days. Well, okay, there are actually a lot, but the one I'm going to mention now is very prominent. The missions Roxas has to go through are just... eh. They can be legitimately fun at times, but they still are so repetitive and mundane. They either revolve around killing a specific enemy, killing a certain amount of enemies, exploring the level, or defeating one or more bosses. And that's just it, there is little to no variety in them. The missions in the different worlds are very similar to each other, and the game can get really repetitive very fast, which is just annoying. Because of this, I really appreciate those missions that try doing something new to keep everything a bit more fresh. Like that one in which Roxas has to fight with his own stick. Hmm... Nah, I should try to rewrite that, it sounds too sexual. But what's the problem in sounding sexual, am I right? <laughs> Now, the main selling point of most Kingdom Hearts games are the worlds based off Disney movies, and in this game they are just... okay. I mean, they are fun, and some of them even explain parts of the story between Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2. For example, you can go to Beast's castle with Soldin and get to see how he schemes his plan to steal the Beast's rose. Details like these are always appreciated. But even still, most Disney worlds are recycled from other games with little to no additions. They don't even follow the stories of their movies that much, so if you want to play a Kingdom Hearts game just for the Disney worlds and not for the story, you should avoid 3 5 day over 2 days and try others. But if you are playing this game for the story, and you see the wars as a secondary, non-important feature, then you will be just fine. It's basic math, come on guys, keep it together. And hell, even the boss battles are not that impressive. With the exception of the final boss, which is one of the best in all of gaming, but I won't spoil it, most of the bosses in this game go from mediocre to incredibly annoying. The Lich Grave is stuck forever in my nightmares as one of the worst boss battles I've ever faced. And the rest of the bosses are not better. The lackluster and annoying boss selection of this game is extremely disappointing to me, especially when compared to the amazing fights in other games of the same franchise. So yeah, the gameplay of Kingdom Hearts 355 over 2 days is very flawed if you couldn't tell, but there's one big redeeming quality for me, and that is, like I mentioned a few minutes ago, the inclusion of a multiplayer mission mode. That's right, you can choose to play as any member of Organization 13 and other extra characters, all with their own weapons, abilities, and limit breaks. You will play through several missions of the game, some with entirely new objectives, and you can play with friends via local multiplayer as well. Even with this game's clunky combat and boring missions, this multiplayer mode is unique, fresh, a lot of fun and very enjoyable, possibly the best part of the gameplay. You should try it out with friends if you can, trust me, you are going to love it even with its big flaws. Kingdom Hearts 358 over 2 days is an interesting game. While it can easily engage some people with its complex and emotional story, fantastic presentation and interesting new mechanics, it can easily throw other people off with its silly writing, clunky combat and repetitive missions. It really feels that most of these flaws were caused by the DS's limitation. 
so this game would benefit a lot from a remake on modern home consoles. With the possibility of online multiplayer, mission mode and even more, I really hope that's a reality someday. I will give Kingdom Hearts 3.5 Babe over 2 days the rating of 6.5 out of 10, and I will label it with the word Flood. Yeah, it has a lot of clearing issues, but if you can get over them you will find a very fun and engaging game, especially for Kingdom Hearts fans. Newcomers to the franchise should start with another key age title though, like Kingdom Hearts 2 or Kingdom Hearts 1. And before finishing this review, I have to admit that, even if it's not perfect by any means, 358 over 2 days still means a lot to me. The story engaged me, and even affected me so much I, I can't even explain it. This game is easily in my top 50 favorite games. The story of Roxas, Axel and Shion is truly something to be experienced by yourself, and it can bring out some of those emotions only good storytelling can bring out. And come on! Playing as the entire organization 13 is just so badass! I love it! You must buy this game! N not really, excuse my inner fanboy, I it's very flawed, don't buy this game, just think about it, okay? And that is my review of Kingdom Hearts 3.5 Babe over 2 days. I hope you liked it and you can leave your thoughts on both the video and the game itself in the comments down below. If you are interested in seeing me reviewing a certain game, just tell me, I'm always open to suggestions. Click the link right there if you want to see more reviews or the one on the left if to watch some of my video game countdowns. Feel free to subscribe if you like my content, follow me on Facebook for constant updates and follow me on Ask where I answer questions about anything on a daily basis. And yes, now I know that you can't link other websites on YouTube, I am horrible at this. And yes, this was the first time I've shown my face in my videos. I know my camera is not the best one, but I think it works well so far. I'd love to know what you think about those skits. And yeah, I am ugly as sin. But I honestly don't care. <laughs> I have nothing else to say here, so thanks a lot for watching, and see you guys next time.